WWE and Vince McMahon made mass releases, and a lot of former WWE stars were motivated to prove them wrong. Thus far, a lot of them have failed. Pro Wrestling Bits, subscribe now. AEW is having a budding crisis with disgruntled talent, as limited TV time and a crowded main event picture is beginning to catch up to Tony Khan. But frustrated talent aside, AEW has struggled with a host of former WWE guys who were seemingly brought in to stick it to Vince McMahon and prove the establishment wrong. Vince McMahon has had his own problems as his hush money scandal totals 20 million in counting. But prior to his own downfall, Vince made the call to bring about a Costco wholesale amount of downfalls with one round of mass releases after another. Some of WWE's more notable roster cuts have found their way to AEW, but outside of some memorable debuts, they're really not that better off than they were in WWE. AEW has succeeded with big stars like CM Punk and Brian Danielson, of course, but what promoter hasn't? When it comes to reimagining underutilized WWE mid-carters and reinventing them as main eventers the way many assumed Tony Khan would, AEW has largely failed. For one reason or another, most former WWE talent has struggled to break out of the slumps that did them in back in Stamford. And with the Triple H era taking form in WWE and wrestlers starting to complain in AEW, there's more pressure than ever on Tony Khan and AEW to placate struggling talent. Let's start with honorable mentions in Red Dragon with Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly. Red Dragon was useless to WWE with no Adam Cole, especially while Vince McMahon was still in charge and they knew it. Fish and O'Reilly went running for greener pastures right after Cole did, and with the Undisputed Era reunited as the Undisputed Elite, it's been fine. Cole and O'Reilly have battled injuries, stifling the group's momentum, and that long-awaited uh, dream match between the Undisputed Elite and the Elite finally seems to be coming together. But to be honest, it's rushed and might be too little too late. With Cole being more of a commodity in his first few months in AEW, he seems further from the AEW world title than ever. And if Adam Cole is cooling off, Red Dragon is a big block of ice. Best case scenario, Red Dragon and Adam Cole might be salvaged by the AEW trios titles. Buddy Matthews made his return to AEW TV only to get mauled by Sting. Add Matthews to the category of former WWE talent to make big debuts in AEW before vanishing. Nobody will ever doubt Buddy Matthews' talent, but he's the third member of House of Black and the only member whose body isn't covered in tattoos. Matthews is essentially the only member of the House of Black who is currently studying the Rosetta Stone for the occult. Maybe it's time for a new stable. Can somebody get Buddy Stokely Hathaway's business card? It breaks my heart to do this, but Athena cooled off almost in record time as AEW continues to struggle booking its women's division. With Jade Cargill and Britt Baker, it's only real success stories as legit TV draws in three years of women's wrestling in AEW, Athena has been victimized by AEW's inability to book women. Since Athena's AEW debut at Double or Nothing back in May, Jade Cargill has defended the TBS title against three opponents. None of them have been Athena. Athena finally reinserted herself back in the TBS title picture Wednesday on Dynamite, so things might actually be looking up for Athena. Hold your head, girl. Now let's get to this gangsta shit. Keith Lee has been fine in AEW, but I didn't expect fine when he fell into Tony Khan's lap. I expected an instant world title contender who looked the part and was different from anything else national pro wrestling offered in its main event picture. Stop me if you've heard this before, but Keith Lee had a great debut in AEW before fading away. Yeah, he's tag team champion, but I've seen this movie before. This has the same vibes as when Scorpio Sky was TNT champion because AEW was still heating up Wardlow to take it from him. Now AEW is half-heartedly crowned Swerve in our glory as AEW tag team champions before FTR inevitably takes it away from them. And to be honest, FTR deserves those titles because despite Swerve in our glory's upset surprise win, FTR has been booked as the best tag team in AEW and the world. How about Samoa Joe's history of injuries was made into a punchline by AEW's own Max Caster. Joe won the ROH Television Championship, which is almost like buying a replica belt at a live event. Joe is the only television champion who is rarely on TV, and since leaving WWE, where once upon a time he was threatening to dethrone Brock Lesnar, Joe's biggest headline in AEW has come because he was double booked. Judging by his performance at Death Before Dishonor, Joe's still got it. 
But as is the case with a lot of guys, AEW doesn't have enough resources to make the most of it. Andrade has recently been reunited with his best friend Roosh, but this is emblematic of the start and stop booking that has come to define Andrade's AEW career. First he was with Vicky Guerrero, then they were like, no, scratch that, let's put him with Chavo. Then they said, screw, let's put him with MJF for a cup of coffee. No, 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 let's put him with Matt Hardy in the Hardy family office. I hear Ric Flair's available. Let's, no, no, never mind. Uh, shit, maybe we can give him a lawyer. At this point, AEW could give Andrade Charlotte Flair, and I just wouldn't care because AEW Andrade seems to be allergic to momentum. I don't know when this man's contract is up, but he might want to James Harden that shit and force his way out of it to go to Triple H's WWE, where he'll be protected and pushed. Ruby Soho should be a pillar of the AEW women's division, bar none. I thought WWE was crazy to serve her up to AEW on a silver platter, where she seemed to be a perfect fit. But since her debut, her most newsworthy moment came when she was booed vociferously by AEW diehards who were pissed that she beat Chris Statlander. Since then, she's had her arms slammed in a door, and though she's technically part of a top storyline, she's in a supporting role that's beneath her. If Ruby Soho would have just waited it out for maybe another year like her buddy Liv Morgan, maybe WWE would have seen the light in her. Ruby Soho is not involved in either of the women's title feuds and is currently mired in the island of misused toys that is the AEW women's division. And the number one talent that Vince McMahon was right about is Malachi Black. Malachi seemed on his way to proving WWE wrong and then some in the first few months of his debut. His feud with Cody Rhodes was one of the best in 2021, but after that hot start, he settled into the mid-card alongside the House of Black. Malachi Black had Undertaker-like mystique and presence as a solo performer, but he seemed to lose something by joining up with a stable like everybody else in AEW. Apparently, AEW operates by prison rules where everybody has to be in a game. Black seems to be headed toward a feud with Sting, and a win over Sting could be just what Black needs if he wants to be relevant again as a singles performer in AEW. Will struggling former WWE stars recover from their slump or go back to Papa H? Who else was Vince McMahon's regime right about? Tell me in the comments!